Welcome to the Legends of Master Show, everyone. I am your host, Tom Wheeler, and I am very excited to introduce a guest today. He is a very talented young actor and uprising star. Welcome to the show, Owen Meyer. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's uh, really nice to finally meet you. Uh, same here, man. Yeah, I, I became like an instant fan. It was, it was one of those, uh, you know, it's supposed to be in lockdown for everybody for so long, and all of a sudden, this pops up in the in the feed here. And uh, immediately, I'm just like, well, that looks like something I might be interested in. And just looking at the trailer, I'm like, okay, I'm buying this right off the bat. So, uh, <laughs> uh, man, you, this is such an amazing film. Uh, before we kick off into that, though, I kind of like to get, like, your origin story, your background. Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of going into how you even got into acting uh, originally. Can you go into that story, please? Yeah, actually, before I was acting, I actually did, like um... – like semi-professional dancing. Exactly. Yes. And yeah, yeah. And um, one, I won a um title at one of the dance competitions, and the wow. owner of that dance competition told me, "Oh, you'd be such a great actor." It just kind of clicked cool. to me. I was like, "I would love to do that." So I started taking a few auditions here and there, and uh, I got an audition for music videos that I ended up doing. Amazing. And wow. I I did it, and it was just such a blast. So I just put a lot of hard work into doing it. Yeah, oh, I love that. That's amazing. You never know, right? Um, you know, that was another thing. Because when you when you do dance, I wanted to bring that up. I'm so glad you did, uh, because as a performance, you are communicating, you are telling a story. Uh, can you go into maybe like how that kind of helped you take the what you, the knowledge and, and training and experience you have with dance and telling stories with that into acting? Yeah, um, no, dance was definitely a good like kind of instructor to like kind of the basis of acting. Because when you're on stage and you're dancing, you have to put a lot of, like, kind of, um, how do I say it, energy into it. And you have to use your face a lot. Like, you have to tell a story through your facial expressions. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, it, it, it you know, transfers over so well. Um, and, yeah, I mean, let's go right into this again. And uh, this is coming up. Uh, it's on all digital platforms right now, but it's coming up for uh, DVD and Blu-ray uh, re release for Psycho Gorman, PG for short. Uh, March 16th. Um, you know, so how did you even get involved with this particular film? Okay, so this is funny. This is funny. Um, I was visiting my grandparents in Canada, actually. And oh. I have I have dual citizenship, which is kind of a win-win. Okay. And when I was in Canada, uh, we got the call for an audition, which was Psycho Gorman, PG for short. <laughs> yeah. And it was just lucky because we were in Canada uh, and they were just kind of accepting people who were basically only in Canada, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I did the audition. Um, they wanted to do a callback online. And that's when I let them know, like, I had dual citizenship. I'm able to come here. It's, you know, it's all perfect. And, okay. yeah, and then I got the part. I met Mimi, and <laughs> yeah. we just hit it off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And, and she, uh, uh, it is pretty funny. Uh, with, with Nita... She, you might as well call her Mimi because she embodies <laughs> that character so well. Uh, we even had um, uh, Stephen Kostansky, the writer director, uh, on recently, and uh, even there, just like she's kind of that's who she is. That's who she uh, is. <laughs> um, for you, I mean, what was it like? Uh, let's kind of go in with because yeah, there's a phenomenal cast uh, for this film uh, across oh. the board, and everybody has their own moments. I, I don't want to even say anybody really owns the film or steals the film. Everybody has really their own moments here, including yourself. But uh, we could start with uh, Mimi, uh, with Nita, uh, uh, Josie, Hannah. Can you go into, what's it like working with her? Uh, it's it's great. It really is great. Um, she is really like Mimi Offset, which sometimes, you know, yeah. gets a little much. But no, she she's awesome. Uh, she's such like a kind-hearted person. And she's so funny to be around because she's always cracking up jokes and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing, um, and and not only was uh, uh, Stephen Kostansky, you know, writer director on this. I mean, he he is an amazing uh, special effects artist himself in his own right. Um, what was it like uh, working with him? Because it seems like he put a lot of his own like just personal love for things. You know, all the things he loved, he put into this movie. It really kind of came across. Yeah, no, uh, Stephen's great. He he he's fantastic. Seeing all the monsters he made like by hand was mind-blowing because they were all so like in depth and um he made some of them like overnight which i i can't imagine no he he's such a smart guy and i love every single movie he's made so far 
Oh yeah. I, that was another thing, you know, this is the first time I, you know, I heard of his work and immediately I went down the rabbit hole. The, the very next thing I did I watch was the void and the he's void. Kinda, yep. he's kind of go down the rabbit hole from there. And it's just all amazing stuff I'm looking forward to his future work. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many, um, uh, different interesting characters in this, uh, this film as well. We kind of bounce around a little bit and, uh, just right here, the guy gets counsel. I know a lot of fans are, 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 their eyes are towards tube man on the right there. And, uh, this, this crazy guy right here himself, uh, <laughs> that it's was like, my favorite character for that sure. That one is like, how does yes. that work? Is it? <laughs> uh, what was, so you mentioned a second ago, like, what what is it like in person? Because you're in the middle of this craziness, right? That's just like mm -hmm. making a film. You don't really know how it is. So it's done, but like, there's all these monsters and creatures. What is that like in person, uh, acting wise? Yeah, it, it's really cool because uh, this was my first really like big step up in films. Like yeah. this was this my uh, most recent film was like uh, Alternate Grounds, which was like more indie yeah. side, and it was yeah. feature film. But this one was a huge step up, and seeing the monsters on set, oh my man, yeah. that that definitely gave me nightmares for a few days yeah. because they're yeah. so like realistic. And then I actually didn't know what Matt looked like until towards the end of filming, really? because I was so used to seeing him in Psycho Gorman. And Interesting. Just having them talk to you, it's it's a oh, lot. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Uh, here's a nice little uh, lovely encounter you guys had prepping for something. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, very, very caring, uh, caring guy. Yeah, it, it was amazing talking to him on the show. And yeah, I mean, it, it sounds crazy, all the prosthetics, especially for Matt, because he, he was pretty much in every scene in the prosthetics as well. Mm -hmm. And man, it, the, the makeup was just, I mean, like I, I told uh, uh, Steven, it's, it's uh, horrifically pleasing. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine what that's like and, and imagine not seeing him beforehand, maybe kind of help getting to, uh, the method side of acting, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that photo actually, um, completely real. He totally would just got mad at me and, you know, lifted me up by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Matt's amazing. And having him as Psycho Goreman was honestly really good because he really put the, um, the emperor side on <laughs> really well, yeah. like the, the alpha man. In <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And, and then, yeah, it just sounded to me on, like on set, like uh, pretty much there was no, everybody's busy body. There's, there's no like big break. Everybody is doing something. Cause there's so much to be done. Cause uh, I want to pop this on here. Just like you wouldn't tell on, on the film. Cause they did such a phenomenal job with this, but it was, it was actually uh, a, a very, very low budget movie. But they made it look so like multi multi uh, million dollar production, mm -hmm. and and again, you know, having uh, someone amazing like Steven on set working with you, uh, you know, I always I wanted to ask you like, there's a lot of you're working with these professionals uh, on not just Psycho Gorman but the other productions. You can't help but it's kind of like almost like uh, film school or college being on set with these guys. What's like a, a major takeaway? Whether it's Psycho Gorman or or otherwise, what are some major takeaways you've gotten uh, being on set? That, that's a great question, actually. Um, so, honestly, with every single film, I usually try and take away something from it. Like, like I try and, like, observe stuff and, like, you know, okay, how could I take this to, like, my next project? Um, yeah. Honestly, the biggest thing I've taken is that, like, everyone has their role. Everyone has their thing to do. And if one person slacks off, that could ruin the entire film. Or that could just make it a little bit less immersive. So... As long as everyone's like you know on their feet on their roles, it turns out amazing. And as you can see, Psycho Goreman turned yeah. out amazing. A <laughs> uh, hundred percent, yeah, I, it, it, unbelievable all, all across the board. Uh, what would you? I mean, again, it's. I wanted to really ask you this because it's my favorite thing about this movie in particular because it is so crazy. Uh, and, and by the way, beautifully blended you, uh, comedy, horror, sci-fi, everything blended very nicely, which is not an easy task. Usually, it's just like horror or comedy. And um, when you first got the script, I mean, what were your thoughts? Oh my God! When I when I first read the script was actually with like a group reading with Mimi and Steven. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Nita and Steven. I, mean, yeah. I gotta get used to yeah. saying Steve, Nita. <laughs> um, when I first read it, it was with them actually. I was supposed to read it beforehand, but I didn't. Okay. My mistake. Yeah. <laughs> but when I first read it with them, it was really great because. I was honestly laughing the entire time as I was reading through it. Like I, I couldn't <laughs> hold in my laughter at moments. Like when um, Adam has a scene, um, Adam's like in the bathroom 
angry at um, Susan. Yeah. And he's like yelling and <laughs> it's it's so funny because when Steven read it, he read Adam's part. And it was <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of wondering why Steven wasn't in the film himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing. Uh, that, that is amazing. You know, I'll put this up here because it's got a good, uh, uh, quite a few people in, in the cast in one shot. I mean, everybody was so amazing in this. Like I said, they all have their own moments. Uh, um, and yeah, like Adam Brooks as Greg, uh, uh, Alexis as Susan. I mean, uh, Matt had a great point too. I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Like, uh, I, I would wouldn't mind watching a sitcom of just like uh, Greg and Susan's relationship and how that plays out with you and uh, you and uh, you know, as the kids, um, you know, what was it like working with uh, them as, as the parents? It was honestly, it was really good. Um, I keep seeing it was really good because everyone on set was amazing. Everyone was great. It was fantastic. But um, Adam and Alexis were really good um, parent figures, I guess you could say. Because it was so funny, and they um, it was kind of like reverse roles. Like, yeah. Susan was the one, you know, kind of being the disciplined one, and Greg was the one letting everyone pass. <laughs> it, was <Yeah. laughs> just, it was really funny, and they really did their roles amazingly. Definitely definitely, uh, good cop, bad cops. That's an yeah. or, or, or good cop, lazy cop. I mean, you, you, good you'd, cop, be lazy, yeah. you'd be the judge there. Uh, um, uh, this is another uh, a lead up to a, a phenomenal scene. Uh, that looked like it took, took a lot of work and just the story on it, uh, I guess it rained the night before and it just, it's just a bunch of craziness there. And I just love, we had uh, Robert Homer on, also a zombie cop in the background there. Uh, how hard was it keeping a straight face with uh, zombie cop hamming it up? Uh, it was it was pretty hard because even Offset, uh, when we weren't filming, he was doing his... <laughs> <laughs> he was addicted to making that noise. Uh. <laughs> and yeah, when we filmed some of those scenes in the forest, I don't think that particular one, but uh, mm. on some of them it was raining, it was like muddy and stuff. Oh, yeah. it was awful weather, but we still, you know, pulled through and did it. So, still, still able to pull it out. Yeah, I, I, I it was interesting. I know uh, uh, Robert was saying, I was like, hey, what do you want to do, uh, you know, with future acting, maybe directing and film stuff? And he's like, I just want to be famous enough so I could, uh, someone spends like 10 bucks on me on Cameo, and I'll say, like, you know, happy birthday or, and I'm like, as zombie cop though, <laughs> you could definitely uh, see him hamming it up a little bit with that. <laughs> oh man, I, I actually I could not say professional in the interview after that either. So uh, he brings a lot to the set. Um, and in honestly, yeah, everything across the board. I, I, another amazing thing about this film is the music. And uh, they actually, uh, we had uh, uh, Martin uh, McPhail from. Uh, uh, Blitz Berlin on the show and the music was phenomenal. I actually even talked with Matt. I was like, man, I just wish I could get hold of the album or something. I'm like, oh, it's it's just released. I'm like, oh, soon mm -hmm. go buy it right away. Uh, what do you think? Like, you're in the middle of all this craziness with the end results. Finally seeing the film, hearing the music, seeing everything piece, piece together. What, what were your thoughts of the film? <laughs> first reaction? Yeah, when I first saw the film, I didn't hear the music beforehand. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I didn't hear the music beforehand. And because I've I've already kind of like seen the like unedited version of the film, like you know not completely finished. And when I saw it finished with all the music, all I could hear was the music. Basically, that's all that was going through my ears was the music. Because no, it was it was a great soundtrack. I I loved it. Amazing. Even the the little kind of sort of music video. I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody. The music video in the middle there. I just loved how uh, uh, you guys were jamming out and certain somebody was playing the drums. It, it was phenomenal. Uh, was, yeah, that was the hardest part of the film because I just could not get the yeah. acting for the guitar. I mean, I, you like, I maybe could dance this out, guys, but yeah, uh, I'll dance this uh, out. I'll, I'll be the background dancer. Um, you know, for you, uh, you know, making this film, you know, I'm sure there's like was crazy days. There were some maybe funnier days, so on and so forth. Uh, what, what for you? Maybe something that behind the scenes that people may not know. What was probably the most complicated thing? For, for you specifically in, in the, sh the filming process? Most complicated thing. I mean, I want to make it interesting, mm -hmm. but honestly, the hardest thing was really just being Luke because I am yeah. really far off from being Luke, like personally. Okay. okay. And, you know, putting that, 
you know, kind of energy into being Luke and like, you know, letting myself get pushed around 24 yeah. seven was a little, it was a little bit tough. Cause my, my older sister, she's like 21 and I don't even let her push me around yeah. at all. <laughs> and then letting Mimi push me around. Now that was hard. <laughs> yeah. Like Nina, I'll give you a pass cause it's in the script, but, uh, uh, I, I normally check you here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other ma amazing thing with this is, is the fan art. I mean, have you seen a lot all this amazing fan art coming out? Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen some fan art and it's fantastic. I I saw one of um, me and Nita. I, I don't remember what it was, but I saw it somewhere on Instagram, and I was like, wow, like someone put a lot of effort into this, into drawing <laughs> me and Nita, like yeah. craziness, <laughs> craziness. And, uh, you know, I, I like anybody from Psycho Gorman. I'm pretty much interviewing everybody. That's my, my, my dedication. Cause I, I really do uh, uh, love this film. It's one of my favorite things I've seen in the past couple of years, actually. And I, I highly recommend everybody, everybody go check this out. But, uh, for you, there's so many different characters in this film. Obviously you have the main guy, Psycho Gorman. Uh, and, and you also have, uh, here, right here, uh, Pandora, like do you, you specifically said that this guy's your favorite, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For sure. I actually got to keep. Okay, so the character is like uh, basically like tub, and it has a bunch of dead bodies in it, yeah. right? And it shoots out blood from its arms. I have one of the arms from the monster. Oh no way! I wait. I think I know where it is. Hold on. Oh Give really? Oh, that'd be moment. amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Wow. It's right man. here. This is this is the <laughs> real deal. This is it. This is one of the hands. Okay, wait. This part can't be showed because it was ripped off. Steven yeah. doesn't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this part was um, inside the tube, and uh, wow. he let me keep it because of how much I like the character. <laughs> and you can amazing. like move the fingers and whatnot. It's all like super in depth. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you for showing that, man. Yeah, no problem. High five. High five. That character, you're just like, you're just like, what, why, how? Uh, okay, and it just it, it sucks you in. It makes you love it even more. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's amazing. That's absolutely. Amazing. And and they even have like uh, this kind of going on. Uh, someone is making old school toys uh, of the main characters here. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I would love to see. Uh, there's lots of talks uh, of of sequels and stuff, and I would absolutely love of to see where where that goes. Let's see where that yeah. where, where it goes. Uh, now, there's other aspects, of course. I wanted to talk all things Psycho Gorman with you, uh, but you you did kind of mention this earlier, and then this movie here, Alternate Ground, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I mean, this is winning awards and and things coming yeah. left and right on this. And uh, what was that like for you filming this in particular? Uh, Alternate Ground was great. It, it was a fun film to make because you know Alien Abductions. That's just yeah. so much fun to do. Um. I think I won three um, best young actor awards for that, yeah. which is which I couldn't believe. And craziest part, it was all on the same weekend. I was like, "What? Oh, what is going on?" Oh, crazy! It was, it was absolutely insane. And um, no, filming that movie was was great. It, it's a great film, and it's um, feature length. Uh, it was really spooky. The alien, I have the alien. I will really? say I, I have the alien in my Amazing. house somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I ended up keeping it after. Uh, and no, it, it's it's really a good film. It was super fun to make. That, that's that's awesome. And, and I love talking all things film on this show too. I mean, this, a lot of great things on this show is like the footnotes, the footnotes. And, um, mm -hmm. You had a, uh, you know, even parts of this, you kind of go on this side of acting, so to speak, with ADR. Yeah. Um, ADR is kind of fun, kind of yeah, fun, right. because sometimes you can get stuck on one scene for like an hour, yeah. which is awful. But um, no, ADR is fun because seeing yourself acting in it and then trying to voice over it, it's a little bit difficult because you're like, oh, I did that. Oh, that was kind of cringy. Like that wasn't a that was not a good scene. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Watching yourself acting is awful. I don't recommend anyone doing it, to be honest. It's, it's got to be tough. Right? I mean, like, uh, it's one thing to perform. Well, you're like, again, dancing background. <laughs> I have a, a music, you know, music performance background of with guitar and bands and stuff. And it's like, yeah, when you're there, it's it's awesome. But like watching it back, you're like, we kind of live this already, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't need to see it again. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, yeah. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see like actors like, uh, like Johnny Depp is famous, famous for like, I don't want to 
watch myself back, which again, doing ADR has got to be tough to do. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Amazing. I did ADR for Psycho Gorman as well. I'm, I did a few scenes, but we didn't need too many scenes because our sound team was amazing. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. It seems like everybody was just, everybody poured their heart and soul into that, uh, into Psycho Gorman and pulled off miracles. I mean, some things that would normally take way longer, way more budget. Uh, and, and I talked to Steve about this sometimes, uh, especially being on say price see, like sometimes, um, uh, uh, if you don't have a lot, you know, that the necessity kind of raises, uh, the art of invention, so to speak, whatever the exact, yeah, is yeah. um, uh, amazing. And you have a, a, a other amazing work that more, more on this actually, like, uh, with see through me, uh, you know, not only, uh, acting and things like that, but kind of getting into more production sides of things uh you kind of go into that experience of, of the business so to speak um directing is oh it's so difficult it is okay. so very difficult <laughs> trying to keep everything in order it is so stressful but it is really fun everything is really fun when you're you know making a film especially when you look back on it it's like wow i was stressed out then i should have been having way more fun but um right Currently, uh, I'm directing my own film alone, which is called 14. Yep, yes. there it is. Yeah, and it was a little bit of a bummer because we had to take a small break because of Corona, but we're getting back into it very soon. Uh, amazing. This summer, I'm pretty sure. And, oh, amazing. Yeah, no, that's a great film. It's basically just about you know how kids and their struggles are compared to nowadays and compared to back then. Oh, and, amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, we have a great cast. I'm so excited to keep working on that. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean coming a long way with it. I mean, uh, I mean, this is like um, uh, kind of like a little, sort of a little trivia for people. You had you had like a little uh, little thing in Nosferatu. Yeah. Uh, so this hit show here, and uh, and you know, of course, if you have any behind the scenes on that, but like, how do you go from? How does it feel? Uh, just that progression is, I guess, as an artist, is the best way to word that. It covers everything. Uh, going from like Nosferatu to here, yeah, filming filming this for fourteen and and so on and so forth. What what is that? process like for you uh no it was great because honestly when i filmed nosferatu i never thought i would go from being descriptive as kid number two yeah. to um lead slash director <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah. only like a year it was like wow this is moving way too fast for me <laughs> that's amazing yeah because you, uh, you like you said earlier like you started as a dance you know dancing and things like that you know someone at that that show that ran it like it says hey you probably have a good crack at this. The next, you never probably. I would imagine you never thought in like in a million years, like you'd be doing things like this, right? Yeah, honestly, I thought that. Um, back when I first thought about like you know trying out acting, I thought it would be like oh, a little side hobby. Oh, was I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And speaking of which, uh, you know, I, I do like to talk about like future things as well. Uh, so you have fourteen that's being worked on. Uh, imagine you, you've been able to start. Uh, back on production on that, or are you in post production at this point, or? Um, we're about halfway through filming it. it okay. Because like you know, halfway through Corona happened, we had to take a little bit of a break. But um, yeah. it's good because we got the parts that were like you know necessary for people not to age, so it won't really matter if people age. Amazing. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure I've grown like six inches since yeah. Corona. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> The clock, the clock is ticking here, guys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's ticking. Come on, we gotta get the vaccines out. We gotta move quickly. Start doing all this like de-aging makeup. For fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it'd be hard to be like in in a movie called Fourteen when you don't look fourteen. Um, yeah, when you're seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> now here's another one that's coming out. Um, you know, we can't talk a whole lot about it, but it is very exciting nonetheless, and that is the Terrifier Two. Uh, the sequel, hold up the peace sign here for everybody. Um, you know, the first one actually was amazing. Uh, great horror films, a lot of thrilling side of that. Um, you know, how'd you even get involved in that? Um, I mean, I didn't really have many connections to get involved with that. That was just kind of another, like, you know, kind oh. of luck of the draw audition. Oh, um, actually, wait, no, I'm wrong. Steven recommended me to um, oh. the director of Terrifier 2, I'm pretty sure. He did Amazing. recommend me, which was I was I was shocked. I was like, "Wow, Steven, thank you so much for doing that, man!" Like, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> and no, um, Terrifier Two was a blast. I met um, Felissa Rose actually on Terrifier Two. She, she's a great actor. She's cult classic, way way back. Um, wow. She's fantastic. And meeting her, I was like, "Whoa!" I like actually just met someone that's like big in the industry, like really big. <laughs> like really. 
yeah, another legend in her own right. Yeah, yeah, and um, making Terrifier two was great. Uh, I didn't get to see Art the Clown, sadly. Oh, bummer. bummer. Yeah, but um, no, it was it was super fun, and especially because I love Terrifier one. That was fantastic. Super well done. Yeah, I mean, uh, so excited for you know your future work here, and and, and this is important to show as we're kind of uh, coming closing on it. Uh, you know, as far as future plans, because I mean, you obviously acting in the past, you've done dancing, uh, directing, writing, you know, producing. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in the editing side of things, which is a, this whole other monster. Uh, just doing uh, this show, I know. It, it, I can only imagine feature productions and things like that. Uh, what's the future, like future goals for you? What, what are you looking to aspire to do? That is a great question because, honestly, I haven't been able to put too much thought into it um, during Corona. I mean, I should be able to, but um, right. I was, you know, stressed out about all this stuff. Like, oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. My career, it's going to end. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, I'm definitely, my future goal is to make a sequel to Psycho Goreman. That, yeah, sir, my, is a great my, answer. That's my that future is a, goal. <laughs> that is a great answer. Now, I'll, I'll just ask this, because we don't know, uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything for Psycho Gorman. I really think everybody should check that movie out. Um, but for you and your mind, what would you, what would you like to see in the sequel to Psycho Gorman? <sighs> if you had your way, uh, if I had my way, you know, I'd probably make Luke a badass. You know, <laughs> kind of <laughs> kick some names and take some ass. That's a yeah, that's great quote. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Avengers Endgame. That's a. You got you got to quote it. I would definitely love to see Luke and Mimi just kind of you know take charge a little bit and you know maybe take the universe on hand by uh -huh. hand. I, I was about to say that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, of course, you know, Mimi getting any more power would be scary, though, right? Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Like running the Gygax Council or something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she ran the Gygax Council. Oh, we'd be in a, we'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> though, though, of course, Luke would be there to bounce her. I mean, yes, come on. Yes, yes, To To be fair. Uh, <laughs> I'd be there to be like, Mimi, stop. Yeah. I just... <laughs> No more, no more death. Come on. Um, yeah, no more, please. Yeah, that. I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. I and I, there's a, enough uh, um, fandom on it now. I, it, it's kind of like its own thing. It's like it's, it's like its own, you know, um, Star Wars or its own, uh, or, or even a cult, cult classic at this point. I, yeah. I really wish and hope. I really hope at some point, uh, you know, when theaters open up, it would be amazing to see this. I mean, live at a theater because it's it's one thing to like uh, listen to a CD. I say this a lot, but it's one thing to listen to city, but it's still amazing. Nothing replaces seeing the live performance of something. That's what a movie theater is for this. I think, okay, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think they are shooting towards trying to get it in, like, you know, select theaters in the future. I don't know exactly, but I think they might be trying to. I oh, that would so. be amazing. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. That would be amazing. I'd love to see this in film or in theater. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, and and if, like I said, everything in this, I love. I really appreciate, especially with Sacco Gorman uh, uh, and Stephen's work. Really, uh, is the real world life effects that he's doing. Uh, he's obviously got you know certain CGI, you know, perfect blend of mediums. But uh, like you said, you know, just being on set, uh, having the real thing there, you know. Blood's really shooting out of this guy's arms. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's something to be said with that, right? Yeah, no, they they had amazing practical effects on uh, on set. It was great. I've actually, I don't think I've seen practical practical effects like that well done in like the modern era, like nowadays with film. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Man. Well, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you taking your time, man. Oh, and man, thank you so much for taking time to do the show. It's great uh, actually meeting with you, and of course, I'd love to have you back on the show. It looks like we have something to look forward to in the near future. Yes, for sure, for sure. It was it was amazing meeting you, and this interview was a lot of fun. Great questions. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the show. For more great interviews and content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Legends and Master Show. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Be sure to go to our website, www.legendsandmastershow.com, and join our email list for all coming shows, events, and articles. See you on the next one.